Hi everyone and welcome from a windswept but sunny Spain. So I'm with New Cross basically this afternoon. So New Cross are uh, an organisation that so far have trained almost a quarter of a million nurses, basically particularly for the UK market. And I'm going to be having conversations with them about the future of artificial intelligence in healthcare. Now we're kind of going to split this into two. So we're going to be having a look at longevity and health span. Now, the difference between the two is very important because you might want to live to 100, but if you're actually in a nursing home for 40 years of your life, you might not like that. But if you live to 100 and your health span is 90 years, where you have the body, the physique, and the mind basically of a 35 year old, for example, for those 90 years, you might quite like that. Now, when we have a look at the use of artificial intelligence, basically in healthcare, it's everywhere. Uh, so on the one hand, we've got technologies like ChatGPT, which are being repurposed to create text to drug. So that's simply where you engineer a text prompt to create the type of treatment or drug that you want. So in this particular case, artificial intelligence will understand what you mean, and it will then create the drug, the protein, whatever it happens to be that corresponds basically to the outcome that you're looking for for that particular prompt. Uh, we've got AIs that are being used and combined basically with supercomputers that let us create new kinds of vaccines in just seven minutes. We've got AIs that are being used to develop personalized cancer therapies which are 100% efficient and 100% effective at killing certain cancers like bowel cancer, pancreatic cancer, breast cancer and so on and so forth. So these are AI cancer essentially vaccines that have been personalized to the particular DNA of the cancer that the individual has. Very expensive, but actually very, very effective. Deadly effective, we might say. We've got AIs that are creating new antibiotics that literally rip bacteria up from the inside out. We've got AIs that have been creating new drugs. So in Silico in Australia, for example, have used AIs to create 30,000 new drugs in 21 days including blockbuster category A drugs, but also category C drugs, which are very useful for treating rare diseases and so on and so forth. When we have a look at the use of artificial intelligence in creating digital twins of individuals so that we now have a new way to test these drugs and treatments on people's, shall we say, digital biology, digital physiology, without actually killing the patient, those are also coming along very well as well. And then when we have a look elsewhere in the AI space, we've actually got AIs that are being used to help people become immortal. So we have AIs that are being used and developed basically to create create what called digital human clones of people. So you can think of companies like Soul Machines are kind of on this particular trend. And when we have a look everywhere else, AI is absolutely prevalent. Uh, when we combine blood tests with lasers, we increasingly have a way to diagnose malaria and tuberculosis pathogens in the field in two hours where it used to take two weeks to figure out whether or not someone in Africa for example actually had malaria. Um, when we have a look at identifying other pathogens we can use artificial intelligence and the smartphone basically to turn your smartphone into a pathogen hunting tricorder essentially or microscope and then talking of tricorders if I combine the artificial intelligence with the camera on this phone with the microscope on this phone uh, with this uh with the microphone on this phone, uh, with the accelerometers and the sensors in this phone, then I actually have a tricorder. So by combining artificial intelligence with the microphone, for example, AI is able to detect whether I have dementia, depression, PTSD, all with a 90 plus percent accuracy. Uh, it can also detect, if we use the camera, uh, skin cancer, pancreatic cancer, because when you get pancreatic cancer, your eyes are slightly yellowy. We can also use the same camera to identify and figure out basically your heart rate, your blood pressure, and so on and so forth. And we can even start using AI basically to diagnose vocal biomarkers. So this is where you can actually listen to the vocal biomarkers in my voice to identify whether or not I've got things like COVID or a cough or the flu. Because when you get ill, essentially, your voice patterns change and AI can pick that up. And when we have a look at things like smartwatches, you know, it doesn't just stop there. 
we can use smart watches from organizations like Stanford now that combine the data that's collected from your smart watch with artificial intelligence to predict whether or not you're going to have an epileptic fit and even predict that you are getting ill because as you start getting ill the galvanic skin response starts changing you start sweating a little bit more your baseline or core temperature body temperature starts changing maybe it falls maybe it elevates and so when we actually have a look at the use of artificial intelligence it's absolutely everywhere in healthcare but one of the biggest problems that we actually have with some, some of the new AIs is that they are what we call adaptive so when we have a look at AIs that are being used to assess radiology uh, images they learn so they will learn basically that this particular thing in the image is this particular disease or whatever it happens to be this particular condition and when we actually have a look at the evolution of AIs that are able to evolve and adapt so these are neural networks from a regulators perspective how do you actually regulate an artificial intelligence that 24 hours later could actually be a thousand generations superior to what it was before so that's just a little preview of what I'm going to be talking about today basically with Newcross. That's it. And if you want to see uh, the full presentation, then go to the YouTube channel. It'll appear on there probably in the next couple of weeks. And uh, that's it from me from a very windy Spain. And uh, great seeing you all. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed anything. And uh, see you all again soon. Take care. Goodbye.